Good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome back to the continued educational webinar series by Algorithmic Traders Association. My name is Alex Kristop. I'm the director of educational programs with Algorithmic Traders Association. In this webinar we're going to discuss one of the cornerstone notions of systematic trading which unfortunately is very often considered as vague non-transparent and even mysterious by many traders. We will discuss the robustness of trading strategies. Normally, when we start learning any new subject or getting familiar with a new concept, we start with its definitions and uh, this is what I tried to do in all my previous webinars. However, before we give a definition for trading strategy robustness, we need to understand more the very reason why we would need a new term because without this understanding any further discussion of robustness may look obscure. Robustness pertains to the problem of assessing the strategy performance and helps solving two major problems. Assessing the past performance of a strategy and somehow forecasting its possible future behavior. Let's consider both problems in more details. When we speak about assessing the performance of a trading strategy, we normally mean that there are better strategies and worse strategies. And there exists any methodology which would help us telling the former from the latter. Usually, a visual representation of a strategy performance in form of an equity curve is taken into account at least at first. In many cases, it is indeed possible to immediately select strategies which performance looks better and uh, which one looks worse. Indeed, in trivial examples, like what you can see in this slide, even visual analysis of the strategy performance works well. Even you're asked to express your opinion about these performances quantitatively, I think there won't be a major problem for anyone. Just saying that the leftmost strategy makes money and the rightmost uh, one doesn't make money. And that will be enough. Now there are more complex cases. For example, in our previous webinar dedicated to optimization, we considered three equity curves of hypothetical strategies and uh, let's look at them again. You can see that all three of them make money. However, I think that you are not fully comfortable with any of them. Why? Because each one has its own drawbacks. The good news with this example is that, again, we are able to assess these drawbacks quantitatively. The last most strategy obviously works within too short a period of time. The one in the middle has too deep a drawdown, and the rightmost strategy has been in a drawdown for too long. As you can see, in each case, we can find the most appropriate metric, which helps us assessing the drawbacks quantitatively. Nevertheless, sometimes visual analysis is not sufficient to make a competent judgment about the strategy and its performance. Let's have a look at these two equity curves. It's hard to say which one is better because all their conventional metrics are very similar. How could we select the one which is better? If we cannot say anything more about their past performance, then the most reasonable question that arises at this point is whether they would achieve similar performance in the future. Well, in the long run, this is the only question which is important for any investor or trader, right? Thus, we have come to the concept of robustness of a trading strategy. Now we can provide a definition of robustness applied to trading strategies. We consider robustness in two aspects, as the ability of a trading strategy to preserve its performance metrics when we change the values of its parameters, 
and uh, has the ability of a trading strategy to withstand changes in the market environment, which in turn affect price behavior. As an immediate corollary from this definition, we can see that robustness is the key concept in systematic trading and perhaps the only one which allows us to say at least anything about possible performance of a strategy in the future. Now, let's consider both definitions in more details. Here, we can see how the performance of a strategy which trades crude oil futures depends on the variations of its parameters. We can see that it is almost insensitive to the parameter along the y-axis, while it is extremely sensitive to the parameter along the x-axis. In case the strategy is optimized, it's most likely to expect that only one combination of parameters is chosen, and in case this market somehow changes and the chosen parameter is not representing the exploited market phenomenon anymore, then there is a chance that the strategy will at least seriously underperform or at worst even lose money. On the other hand, here you can see that this strategy is very insensitive to its parameters and this means that even in case the market conditions change significantly from their present state, we still can expect the strategy to perform well. Of course, robustness is much more than just stability of trading strategy parameters. We should take into consideration not only how the performance of a strategy changes with changes in its parameter values, but also whether these changes are reasonable and realistic in real markets. In other words, we should always remember that we test a market model and not something mathematically abstract. And the market model should always represent the limitations pertaining to real markets in a particular trading strategy. To explain it in simpler terms, let's again consider an example. Let's imagine that we have a strategy which buys stocks when the trading session opens with a gap down. A very classic strategy which, by the way, can still be used for certain stocks in certain markets. Basically, we have only one parameter for the entry rule in this strategy, the amount of this very gap. If it's deep enough, then we buy. We want to analyze how our strategy is dependent on this parameter. When we start to vary this parameter, we can see different performance of the strategy, and at certain value, it can become even negative. However, if we look at the actual values of the only strategy parameter, we can see that the strategy becomes untradeable when its only parameter now represents not a gap down, as in the original strategy, but a gap up. And at this point, we start to analyze a totally different strategy because we changed the parameter value so much that now we have modified the very strategy logic. This is a very basic, of course, a very simplistic illustration, but it clearly shows that we should be very careful with stress testing as well as with any other aspect of systematic trading. However, robustness is not only about stress testing and test of strategy performance stability against changes in strategy parameters. It is also about whether the strategy is adequate to the market conditions and especially whether it is capable of either adapting to changes in market environment or at least signal that the new market conditions are not favorable for this particular strategy. Again, a simple example may help. I think we still remember uh, the financial crisis in 2008 and uh, in the first case 
uh, the whole market environment changed due to a great number of reasons, from lack of liquidity to changes in the strategical plans of major world financial institutions. However, a robust strategy would have taken advantage of this period, as in the example on the left, or at least stayed flat, as in the example on the right. Therefore, robustness should not be considered apart from the changes in the market behavior and from the very market process which is efficiently exploited by this strategy. As you can see, robustness is a very important characteristic of any trading strategy and it's pity that it's often missed by many researchers and traders. They are more focused on entry and exit strategies rather than on what to do with them when they are all put together in a strategy or a portfolio. And uh, it is no less evident that we cannot analyze the robustness of a trading strategy without understanding the reasons why this strategy should make money and without understanding the global changes in the market behavior and the reasons which cause them. We have developed a very special course for systematic traders which includes exhaustive market research. This research not only allows to design simple and yet consistent trading strategies, but it also features all the essential trading in backtesting, optimization and of course robust assessment. We believe that this unparalleled course is so far the only educational program which explains where to find new trading ideas for your strategies and how to survive the greatest changes in the world markets which are underway now. Now, at this point, I would like to say thanks for your attention and uh, in case you need more information about our educational program and uh, certification, Please feel free to write to info at ATASSN.com. Uh, you can also do that by filling up a form at the classes page of the site. And uh, now the main part of the webinar is over. But for interested attendees, I'm going to say just a few words about this uh, educational and certification program. So if you want to learn more, then simply please stay in tune. The CAT or Certified Algorithmic Trader program consists of three levels or three stages. Within the first stage, we work exclusively with market analysis. Hope uh, you now understand why this analysis is so important for all further technical trading. Second, we work with actually algo design. We learn how to backtest and how to optimize and uh, finally at the third stage uh, we learn the portfolio design, risk management and of course a robustness assessment. Within the first stage we work mostly with the analysis of market as a superposition of human actions and uh, uh, I urge you to watch the previously recorded webinars where I explain the essence of this model where, uh, that we consider the market as a superposition of human actions. And uh, within model, it is possible to identify ideas that really work in the market, the ideas that are not uh, just a combination of technical indicators, but something that immediately corresponds to what is going on in the market to the market structure and uh, to the actions of market participants. And finally, we learn how to transform these ideas into algorithms and programming codes. After we have done that, first we learn how to perform backtesting uh, the right way to avoid very unpleasant and sometimes painful discrepancies be between uh, back-tested results and uh, live performance of the same strategy. And also we learn how to use optimization not only 
straightforward optimization, but also walk forward, uh, genetic optimization, and uh, we use optimization rather as a research tool to find uh, very robust clusters of uh, parameters in the uh, parametric space of a trading strategy, rather than just curve fitting a strategy to past market data. And uh, within the third stage, we learn how to create robust portfolios, how to manage risks, because in the long run, systematic trading is all about how you manage your risks, how to properly assess the risk, and uh, this is the very point where robustness assessment uh, enters the stage. Because without it, and without properly assessing the robustness of the strategy, we cannot uh, properly assess our risk and therefore calculate our exposure. And finally, sometimes the most vital information is about uh, to identify the moment when it's appropriate to switch off a strategy. Because sometimes this is the best you can do with this particular strategy. And uh, this whole course normally takes about three months, normally because sometimes we work uh, even more. Uh, if I can see that uh, students uh, require some more time to uh, acquire new knowledge. Uh, we meet once a week in live online classes, and uh, we work in the very small groups uh, of no more than three students, normally two, and uh, very often even individually. Uh, we expect some very basic mathematical background from uh, students, and uh, very basic programming skills. So, as I say, if you ever wrote any program, even in Visual Basic for Microsoft Excel, uh, that will do. Uh, even if you never programmed, uh, it is very possible that you are also eligible. I need only to talk to you and uh, decide whether uh, it's possible really to quickly start with programming of strategies using uh, some simple programming. Because the most, uh, the key benefit uh, here is that uh, all the algorithms that we create are really very, very simple. And uh, as you know, simple solutions are most often the correct ones. And uh, of course, experience with programming is a plus, and uh, experience with trade station or multi choice is also a plus because we uh, mostly work with these platforms. But uh, of course, we do not exclude any platform if you uh, are very familiar with it. So, now I would like to repeat my thanks uh, to you for your attention today.